my first video of 2010, and boy do I have a winner picked out today. This little gem for the old PlayStation. Okay, the title's Dead in the Water, and there's a skull right on the front. Boy, that just fills you with confidence, doesn't it? So, what kind of game is this, you ask? Well, this is one of those vehicle combat games that were all the rage during the reign of the PS1, thanks to the success of Twisted Metal. This game took that basic, awesome concept and put the whole damn thing on the water instead of land. So in a nutshell, this game is basically Twisted Metal with boats. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. How bad could it be? Well, let's find out. Okay, you start it up and immediately you've got a lot of options. And right away, you can see there's two main gameplay modes, traditional Twisted Metal battling and Mario Kartus racing. Looks good so far. And whichever mode you try out first, you'll be able to jump right in, thanks to surprisingly fluid controls. I mean it. After a few seconds, I felt right at home with the control scheme and was shooting up enemy boats to my heart's content. Some have criticized the game for how the boats sometimes bob around too much, making things frustrating, but most of the time I had no problem. Plus, there's a button that lets you easily make sharp turns, so that helps compensate for it. And a big improvement over the standard Twisted Metal controls is how the special weapon is fired with a separate button, so you don't have to toggle around for it. The special weapon for each boat come in all varieties. You got this hard to aim mini nuke, a devastating ram attack, a lightning storm, this disco spin thing, a health sucking beam. But the most humiliating special to be on the receiving end of is the one from your obligatory redneck family, which turns your boat into a chicken. Ugh, look at this. It's like some giant bathtub toy. Is there anything more disturbing and embarrassing in a video game involving chickens? Anyway, like Twisted Metal 2, the game's arenas have themes based off different countries of the world. Hong Kong, the Amazon jungle, a keep in Scotland. Holy shit, the Loch Ness Monster is Lapras from the original Pokemon? Dumb cameos aside, it pays to know the layout of each arena like the back of your hand, especially the health locations. Oh, you bloody cunt fuck! But does this game do more than just put Twisted Metal on water? Oh, absolutely. First of all, I personally think it's even faster paced than Twisted Metal. Another thing that sets it apart is how tournament campaigns are set up. Instead of advancing from level to level after blowing all the other boats to fuck, you get a ranking based on how well you do in a level. You have to come out on top at the end of each season, and the more times you win big, the more money you earn. Yes, you earn money with which to buy upgrades to armor, engine speed, and the like. The more times you're number one, the quicker you upgrade everything. You can even sell leftover weapon pickups at the end of a bout. This whole setup's simple, and it works brilliantly. And again, Dead in the Water brings more to the table with race tournaments. Here, it's almost like Mario Kart on water instead of Twisted Metal, using weapons to royally screw the other racers over. And this is all just as ridiculously fun in two-player competition as well, just as you would expect. So that covers what this game gets right, but is there anything the developers did here to royally screw the fucking pooch? Well, let me just say that right away, I was struck speechless when I beheld the most asinine gaggle of cliches, seeing the unimaginative characters to choose from. You got the obligatory Crocodile Dundee wannabe, some military fuck more generic than the guy from Avatar, this kid who reminds me of Nimnol from Chippendale Rescue Rangers, some Japanese techie fucker, the obligatory 70s disco black guy with an afro the size of Endor. Another thing that sucks ass is how none of the boat designs are as memorable as, say, an ice cream truck, or a guy sandwiched between two tractor wheels, or a green dune buggy that drops on you like a fallen angel. Well, except Vixie Veins. Her little bat boat is kinda cute, not to mention her one-liners were the only ones that didn't make my ears bleed over time. Ah, uh, what man's heart wouldn't melt after hearing those sweet nothings whispered into his ear. Another thing that's below Twisted Metal standards are the arenas. In most of those games, you essentially got huge 3D mazes, with loads of destructible stuff, hidden passages, and extra goodies. But the levels here are kinda small, and pretty much just on a 2D plane. Sure, there are some structures you can blow apart to find extra cash, but it's not the same. The thing that pissed my shit the most, though, has got to be the uneven difficulty. Play this game on the low difficulty, and usually you can blow away your opponents as easily as the foam on the shore at sunrise. But up the challenge, any, and suddenly all the CPU boats can't stop gangbanging you up your boat's exhaust manifold without mercy! 
when you try to get away, the computer cheats Mario Kart style, always keeping up. Even Nitro Boosts don't seem to help, and your enemies always seem to have plenty of lightning on hand. What, do they have fucking Pikachus riding shotgun?! Ah, oh, piss fuck, I'm a chicken again, but at least I can still use Nitro Boosts. Can I get away? Get I get away? Alright, still got a missile I can turn and counter and- Ah, oh, shit, he came out of nowhere! Unfortunately, this cheap-ass bullfuck carries over to the race tournaments, too. And remember what I said about boasts being bounced around too easily? Well, you'll notice it more often here. Damn, the race mode proves Vixie Vance is probably the worst one to pick. Sure, she's one of the fastest, but cute design and sultry British accent be damned. Her boat's small size means she's bounced around a lot, plus she's got the weakest... armor. What the shit fuck? That train just carried me along and I popped out- Who the fuck was driving that train?! Oh, that explains everything. Prepubescent fuck was probably trying to look up Ghost Zelda's dress or something. There's some other problems I could mention, like the nasty graphical pop-up and how some glitches can make boats get stuck in the scenery. Of course, when it's an enemy boat stuck, I can't complain too much. Yeah, up yours, you vitamin C deprived pirate fucktard. But perhaps the biggest piece of nonsensical assness comes when you reach the end of a battle or race tournament and given a shot at the final boss. What's the final boss, you ask? Some big alien with a bunch of drone boats. Yeah, that's right, an alien. Why is an alien here, hosting a boat tournament? Are we told its motives? Its plans? Its anything? No! This makes no sense at all. Motherfucker, fighting Captain Nemo from 20,000 leagues under the sea would have made more sense. Seeing Amanda Tapping and Mariska Hargitay make sweet lesbian love on the deck of a Somali pirate boat crewed by Ewoks would have made more sense. And as a further kick in the balls, all you get for a reward is driving out into a fireworks display and then just a text box describing what happens to your character. Laziness, bordering on pure faggotry. But despite such glaring flaws, it still delivers as a vehicle combat game. I think this is downloadable via a store for your PlayStation 3, so why not try it out for yourself, if for no other reason than to relive the glory days of vehicle combat games? My final verdict, 7.5 out of 10.